Kia ora everyone, it's again me Father Sherwin with uh, Ryan here for another episode of St. Mark's Young Adult series and we're going to discuss different topics and for this episode 4 of this podcast we're going to talk about prayer. Prayer is something very important in a life of a Christian, Catholic, or even for a person who in one way or another would like to have an encounter with a deity since time immemorial in history we see you know people worshiping big trees worshiping the moon worshiping the sun this is kind of like the connection that we have with the being higher than us but of course uh, for us uh, Catholics we know that our prayers always centered in uh, the word became flesh and have dwelt among us which is uh, centered in jesus christ our lord and i would like to start this podcast by reading from the letter of saint paul to the ephesians on chapter 6 uh, verse uh, 14 to uh, let's say until the 20th uh, until 17 Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. So, Ryan, uh, since talking about prayer, what is prayer for you? Prayer for me, in my um, opinion, prayer for me is my language, the way I communicate to God. Uh, like you said, we have to be in um, communion or in, for me to be able to be in a good relationship, deep relationship with God. Like any other human condition, any relationship needs, in order for it to progress, um, there's a need for a communication. Same thing with my relationship to God or to Jesus. I need to talk to Him always so that my relationship with Him will be maintained and progress. And you also allow Him to talk to you. Yes. So it's uh, it's like Mm. um, a dialogue. A dialogue, yes. One of my spiritual uh, directors, uh, his name, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, uh, Thomas Green, he said Mm. to me, we're always in prayer with the Lord and sometimes we just have to be aware that we are in prayer because our soul so much connected with the divine Mm. that when we what we call a prayer is being disposed in Mm. that moment of encounter Mm. with the Lord although there are you know a variety of ways to pray as you said it's a communication Mm. it's a relationship Mm. so What do you think is uh, the purpose uh, of Mm. prayer for some people? Mm. Like, no, when you pray, what do you normally do? Because when I was growing up, sometimes I want to pray like, uh, I pray to have this and that and that. It's all asking Mm. sometimes or otherwise the the memorized prayers when you were Mm. kids, like our father, the Hail Mary. Uh, the glory be like we were taught that every every church that you go to kneel down and say one hour father one hail mary and one glory be but i think there's more into that yeah Uh, first i would like to say that it when i pray for me it's a very good sign of humility to god it that means that i have to submit myself fully to god um not only asking for favors but you know uh trying to ask for god's will you know to be unfolded to me um i think that is also one of of the many reasons why prayer is there yeah and 
Is it difficult for you sometimes to pray? Yes. You find it difficult, yeah? Yes, I find it difficult sometimes because there are a lot of distractions. And also sometimes if I am asking God for a certain favor, it will take a long time to, to really receive it. Mm. You know, but but for me, it's not actually just asking what I want, but it's also like a prayer for me helps my the conditioning of my mind. Um, it helps me um, realize or uh, yeah realize that it's really not uh, it's not really important for me to really get what I want, but to let myself accept what's the will of God. You know, there was this uh, famous Bible quotation like, uh, Seek and you will find, mm -hmm. knock and the door shall be opened to you. Uh, and uh, it, it's something like, a lot of people were using that one and said, Ask and you shall receive. And said, But I've been asking this one from the Lord and He's not never giving it to me. I've been asking this for 10 years mm -hmm. to change my wife and my husband. Never yeah. did. <laughs> Or, or, or something I've been praying to win the lotto. I, mm. I think I spent so much money. And, mm. You know, if I'm going to win the lotto, I'm going to, mm. you know, do some good act of kindness and everything. Mm. But God never answered my prayer. Mm. Why is that? What do you think? I think God wants us to, to learn a lesson. You know, um, and, and that lesson is, for me, it, it, it must be the best um, lesson or must be the best situation for all mm -hmm. for not just for yourself but for the people around you it's, sometimes I I use that word as well to them it's like it didn't say ask and here it is mm -hmm. it says ask and you shall receive mm -hmm. say shall is an operative word that means you are under the grace of God it's its own time in his own ways and uh sometimes you know some of the unanswered prayers mm. of ours are actually good to us mm. uh because sometimes god's will comes mm. into the end and later on we've been praying uh for you know these things to happen but then something better comes along the way and realize mm. like ah thank god for that unanswered prayer now mm. i got a better one now, uh, moving on. Uh, so, what do you think are different ways to pray? If, especially for, for people. If I'm new, mm -hmm. uh, like I'm new to to pray, uh, to the act of praying. I know I can talk to God, but yeah. uh, what are different ways of how to pray? Well, we, we do have different types of, of prayer. Like, for example, we have the the praising type and we have the uh, asking of forgiveness type and yeah, praising like doing yes give thanks that, to yeah, Lord. yeah yes yeah, yeah. and worship type yeah yeah and then the for asking of forgiveness type and the thanksgiving type, uh, type of prayer mm -hmm. or we have um, a more common one we call it acts and yeah the acts will be like the adoration and then go to is that confession mm -hmm. uh, and thanksgiving. then thanksgiving and supplication, supplication. so there are uh, you know, uh, ways on how to pray, but there are also other established uh, methods of praying yeah. that we are probably some of you are very popular uh, mm -hmm. or have been doing this one, mm -hmm. and some of them are like uh, example, liturgy of the hours, the liturgy what? of the hours, known as the bravery yes. or the divine office. Mm -hmm. In the seminary, we have to have that uh, uh, morning prayer, prayer, morning prayer, evening prayer. Oh. No prayer, midday prayer. Midday prayer for, yeah, for for those who already took a vow. <laughs> yes, morning prayer. Now, as a seminarian, we do morning prayer. Yes. Evening prayer, night prayer. Yes, and also uh, additional of those, you will also have rosary. Rosary, and, then, and we have lectio lectio divina. Yes, we're using the scripture as a mm, way of praying. Praying, and for me, that is. That is now my favorite. Mm. I'm not saying that this is the best one, but it, it praying with the scriptures. Praying the, the, with the scripture is really good for me because you're giving yourself um, a time to be silent, just to you know, just to find stillness and to hear God, you know, God's words. 
um, mm -hmm. striking in your heart. And you also have adoration, isn't it? We do have adoration. The exposition well, of the Blessed exposition. Sacrament. We have like a holy hour, we call yeah. it. It's in, uh, mm -hmm. we normally practice uh, silencio mm -hmm. manium at that mm -hmm. time. It's a great silence yeah. uh, to be able to allow God most of the time to just be with be with Him and allow Him to talk to you mm -hmm. more than you talk to Him. Yes. And, uh, and also, uh, so we got adoration, we got rosary, we got the divine office and then uh what else of course the greatest prayer that we uh we need to we need to attend and to do uh every sunday which the is the holy mass yes. that's that's the uh the epitome of all types of prayers mm -hmm. that's a, the, the beginning and summit mm -hmm. of our catholic life is uh the holy mass itself mm -hmm. so i think it's, it's very important that if you're in the Holy Mass, for example, don't just be an observer. You just sit there and say, aha, uh -huh, aha. Uh -huh. hmm. Father is talking about that one. I'm not quite sure about that, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Be an active participant in the Mass because the Holy Mass is not just a priest doing the Mass, but all of us celebrating the Eucharist together. And that's the reason why the priests have now uh, turned around from the old ways of backing the people mm. now facing the people and said the Lord be with you and you mm. say and with your spirit you lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord mm. there's always this exchange this dialogue mm. we're all called to be active participants and not just observers mm. and fence sitters in the mass just going back to the rosary father mm. What do you think is the importance of rosary in our Catholic way of life? Interesting about, uh, I, I read this one and the, the development of the history uh, is that the tradition, mm. no one is, we got 150 Hail Marys, mm. put them all together with, uh, with the three sets of the joyful mystery, the glorious mystery, and then the sorrowful mysteries. And, and they all the mysteries reflects on the life of oh, Jesus, Jesus and on also in relation with the church and with Mary. But in the olden days, people don't know how to pray. So on the center of prayer before were the monasteries located somewhere else. So if, if people were the peasants at the time will go to the monastery when they give offerings, they ask the monks and the priests mm -hmm. to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And then they were asking the monks, like, can you please teach us how to pray? Mm -hmm. And the monk said, but these people doesn't know how to read and how to write. Mm -hmm. How can we teach them how to pray? Mm -hmm. So they, they asked them to memorize simple verses from the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And the first part of the Hail Mary, for example, is Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And that is basically the greeting of uh, which angel? Angel, angel Gabriel. Gab Gabriel to Mary. That that was his greeting. And then the other one, uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. That's also the response of Elizabeth, Elizabeth after Mary's visitation to her. So these two beautiful excerpts from the scripture they ask the people to memorize. So memorize this one. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the center. So there was this greeting from the angel and also the greeting of Elizabeth on the visiting Mary. The second part of the Hail Mary is Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. That's the response of people acknowledging the importance of Mary in the lives of in the life of Jesus and in the life of the church. And then, because they don't know the 150 Psalms, which the monks have been praying that one, they said, just do it in three uh, sets of groups. So they divide, uh, they, they put it in like, uh, on the, reflect on the life of Jesus, for example, on uh, the, uh, uh, the, the mystery, the mystery, of, the joyful, mystery, mystery joyful mystery. Luminous. Yeah, the Annunciation, for example. for example. So they're going to reflect on that one and then pray those verses while reflecting on one mystery. 
and they move on to another mystery and they move. So in that way, even the people who cannot read and write mm -hmm. will be able to reflect on the Annunciation mm -hmm. and on uh, the birth of Christ, on the loss and finding of the Lord on the temple and so forth and the mystery, completing eventually the 150 mm -hmm. Hail Marys yes. that equates to the 150 Psalms. It's a very ingenious way of getting people engaged mm -hmm. in praying the Holy Rosary uh, as well as a form of meditation, mm -hmm. as a form of reflection, and a form of uh, supplication as well as we reflect uh, the mysteries in the lives of Christ. Yeah. As well. And the Rosary as well, I find it a, a very um, powerful weapon to mm -hmm to break whatever um, vices that you have or any um, neg you know um, not so good situation um, it's a good weapon to hmm. to break it yeah yeah so it's 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 one of those things that we Catholics carry around our you know uh, uh, neck uh, mm -hmm. we use it as a necklace put it in our pockets put it on the rear view of your car mm -hmm. Or you know, just even put it as a bracelet as well. It's always ready there. So when you have spare time, just uh, run through your fingers on those beads and pray as yeah. well. It can also be a good psychological um, tool, if I may say. Just having it in your hand or just holding it mm -hmm. during um, depression or your low moments, um, you can just psychologically you can find comfort. Yeah, uh, and there's also saying like. But Father, you know, there are moments where I cannot pray. I try everything, but it doesn't work. And this is where I say, when I advise them, said, pray when you can. Do not pray when you cannot. Pray when you can. Don't pray when you cannot. Because you're always, again, in a constant uh, prayer anyway. And the formal prayer is just an acknowledgement of this disposition of yours, that you're engaging into this dialogue with the Lord. Uh, and if the shortest prayer you can say is Amen, Amen. then so be. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, again, you, Ryan. Thank you, Father, for this uh, episode mm -hmm. on prayer.